In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and King, welcome to this morning's Sunday virtual service of King's Church. Let's get real for just a minute. I don't know anymore how long we've been in quarantine. I, I haven't been very good about keeping up with the days, but it seems like a while, right? So let me just ask you, how are you doing? I don't mean just physically. I don't mean just are you healthy. How are you doing spiritually? How are you doing emotionally? You know, because the reality is when we get on the other side of this, even if the quarantine's lifted tomorrow, right, and the virus doesn't spread, there's still a real impact from all of this. You know, maybe for some of you, your visions of the future are just getting fuzzier and fuzzier every day that goes by. Maybe it's not the virus you're most worried about. You know, maybe what keeps you up at night is this realization that you're not going to be able to retire like you planned. Maybe that was right around the corner for you. Or maybe uh, the, the fear you're trying to distract yourself from is, is that you're not going to be able to put your kids through college. And they're almost there. Maybe the, the jagged little pill that you're hoping to not have to swallow is that you might not be able to keep your business or your job or even your home. I don't have any magic words this morning to make you feel any better. I don't. What I do have is a God who is real, who acts in history on behalf of his people, and whose promises are sure. You want to meet him? Could you use a little hope right now that's better than just wishful thinking? Would you like to know that your life is built on something stronger than a dollar? I've got it right here. And you know, maybe, you, maybe you don't go to church. Maybe you don't read the Bible. But somehow you've stumbled across this this morning. Okay, And, and maybe you're already like, this is too much for me. I would just say, you've already come this far. Why not just keep going? Interestingly enough, that's where we find the people in this passage this morning. We, we uh, have a people who has come a long way. And they're at what they perceive to be a dead end. And their only options seem to be to turn around and risk death or keep going and drown. They can't see any other options because they're only looking ahead and not remembering what's behind them. They're allowing their present to inform their future instead of looking back on all the times that God has brought them through. So let's look at that together. In Joshua chapter 4, we're going to be reading verses 1 through 7. Now hear the words of the one true and living God. When all the nation had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Take twelve men from the people, from each tribe a man, and command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly, and bring them over with you, and lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men from the people of Israel, whom he had appointed, a man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and take up each of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. So before we just dive right in, let me give you a little background, a little bit of context, bring us up to speed, help us to understand where we are in history and what's gone on so far, how we got here. And let me just frame it for you this way, okay? We're just briefly going to look at uh, who these people are and who this God is, all right? So these people were slaves in Egypt. And this is the God who sent plagues upon the Egyptians so that they would release his people. So uh, these people were helpless. And this is the God who delivered them. These are the people who, after leaving Egypt, they came to the Red Sea and they were trapped because the Egyptians decided to come down with all of their armies and all of their chariots and just slaughter all of them and they had no place to go. 
This is the God who stood the waters of the sea up in columns and let his people walk through on dry ground. These people were helpless. This is the God who delivered them. And these people were also the people that God called his own. But they were stubborn and rebellious and disobedient at every turn and forgetting all that God had ever done for them. And as this older generation, who was there when all of this stuff happened, as they began to die off, the younger generation, being one step removed, it was easy for them to forget all that God had done for his people and promised to do for his people. What they forgot was that this is the God who is real. This is the God who intervenes, who acts in history on behalf of his people. And this is the God whose promises are sure. You, you see in this passage the, the Ark of the Covenant was with them. Did you catch that? The Ark of the Covenant, this was a representation of the very presence of the living God with his people. Right? So it, it wasn't a representation of God. It was a representation of his presence, that he was with them, really. He was going with them through everything. God, God chose to dwell among his people. But it didn't always feel like that. You, you don't, do you ever feel that way? Like, yeah, you know, I, I believe you know, God is with us and he's in control, but it's easy for us to kind of adopt this what have you done for me lately kind of attitude toward God, isn't it? We get rattled so easily. Our faith gets shaken. Maybe even now during the COVID-19 pandemic, you're freaking out. And if you're a Christian, you're struggling to think how how or why God could use any of this for good. Whether you're safe as of now, physically or economically, there's still at least some uncertainty, isn't there? You're experiencing some uncertainty. And that brings me to the, the message, the main idea of the message this morning, which is this. When you don't know what to think, remember how to think. And this sermon only has one point, as a matter of fact, so it should be pretty easy to follow. And it's this, remembering how to think means letting God's activity in the past inform your present and banking your future on His promises. So here we are. The Israelites are at this river. They've got to get across. And it's impossible. They don't know what to think. They don't know what to do. And let me, let me set the scene for you, okay? A little geography lesson. This is in the Jordan Valley, all right? And in the valley is the Jordan River's floodplain. So best case scenario, the, the river's like two football fields wide. Worst case scenario, it's a mile wide. And the author makes a point in the previous chapter, in chapter 3, he, he interrupts the whole flow of the narrative to point out the river overflowed its banks at this time. This is flood season. This is the worst time, right? Here's, here's the picture you need to get, just to drive it home. This wasn't a stream. It wasn't a creek. It was an impassable, raging river. And before they ever got wet, they were drowning in fear and doubt and worry. They would have asked, how are we going to get across that? You know, even if we could swim it, what will happen to our children? They just get washed away. What about our livestock and our animals and our supplies? Even if we did make it across and survive the swim, how would we survive? Here's a few things we need to catch if we really want to step into what it feels like for these people right now. And see, see if this hits home. See if any of this sounds familiar to you right now. God... This is the worst timing ever. Don't you know that? God, I, I thought you loved me. God, where are you? Maybe God isn't real, or maybe he doesn't care. These people, like you maybe, are waiting for God to show up. Because they had forgotten that God has been with them all along. They would have never gotten this far had He not been. You know, one of the, the greatest enemies of faith 
is forgetfulness. I'd really hate for you to forget this season in your life right now. It's flood, it's flood season, isn't it? I mean, th that river's a mile wide, it seems. Maybe you think you've only been brought this far to fail. But there's something, there's something here for you during this time. And I don't want you to miss it. Okay, I don't know what it is. But God knows. Uh, let's, let's talk for a moment and uh, how to think about the future. Remember what we said, that when you don't know what to think, remember how to think. And remembering how to think means letting God's past activity inform your present and banking your future on His promises, right? That's what God instructs His people to do in this passage. He knows they're going to need to cement this occasion in their minds in order to endure hardship in the future. Because more hardship will come. It's not always going to be rainbows and lollipops. They will run into trouble again. Their faith will be shaken again. And they'll start asking all the same questions all over again. God, where are you? But it's the wrong question. When you wonder where God is, remember who He is and what He has done. Verses 4 through 5, God tells, us, tells Joshua and Joshua tells the people that a man from each of the twelve tribes is to take one stone out of the midst of the Jordan River. Okay? Out of the midst of it. Out of the middle of the Jordan River. They're supposed to get these stones from the, for, at the bottom of the Jordan River. God says, take those stones. Why? Look at verse 6. That this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. God makes it clear that getting through the river isn't the end. You must mark this occasion, he says, and remember what happened on this day. Your future and your family's future depends on it. Pick back up in verse 21. Joshua says to the people there, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know, Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Don't miss it. Don't wait to find contentment on the other side of the situation we find ourselves in now. Don't, don't wait till you can find contentment in something that is not God. Capture the moment. Experience God. If you don't, it'll be even harder for you the next time you face difficulty. You know, we're always racing towards independence from the time we take our first steps until we lie in our graves. And we're always really hesitant, really reluctant to wade into dependence. We're, when we're forced to depend upon God, it, it, and we're, we're desperate, we, we pray and we plead to God, God, deliver us. And then when He delivers us, we say, okay, I'll take it from here. Or we think something or someone else, we give someone else the glory. You know, we say, God, please deliver us from this virus. He delivers us, we think doctors and medicine. I'm not saying that's inappropriate to do. But in whose image are those doctors made? Where do they get their wisdom? Who did they cry out to and who delivered them when they were so overwhelmed, perhaps, in medical school and wanted to quit and thought they couldn't possibly make it? Give God the glory. All of creation is His. All of it's His. 
And he uses it like tools in his hand. He's proved it time and time again in his word and in your own life, if you'll remember. But one of the greatest enemies of faith is forgetfulness. Now, I ask you, will you let this moment slip by as if nothing happened? As if there was nothing here to learn, nothing to glean? Are you just going to, are you just waiting to finally not feel so desperate and needy? Or are you learning now how to depend on the only one you can depend on? What stones will you stack up in this time to remember God's faithfulness to you? What will you use or do to mark this milestone in your life and in your family's history? How, how will your children remember this great pause in civilization? How will they remember your response to it? When you don't know what to think, remember how to think. And that remembering how to think comes from letting God's past activity inform your present and then banking your future on His promises. Lastly, the, this dividing waters thing and God bringing His people through on dry ground to a land that was promised to them, that's the message of these people and it's, it's a message for you if you believe in Jesus. On the other side of this troubled waters, and I'm not even talking about COVID-19 anymore, I'm talking about life, right? On the other side of these unpredictable, untamed, troubled waters is an inheritance for you. Remembering what Jesus accomplished, follow me, remembering what Jesus accomplished in his life, in his death, in his resurrection, in the past, lets you know that your soul is safe now in the present. And it helps you think rightly about the future. That's how hope works. It's not based on a belief of what might happen. It's based on what we know has happened. And knowing that we have every reason to believe that what Jesus says will happen, will happen. As we wrap up for today, I was reminded of this line from the hymn, How Firm a Foundation. It goes like this. When through the deep waters I call you to go, the rivers of sorrow shall not overflow, for I will be with you. Your troubles to bless and sanctify to you your deepest distress. Listen to me, if that, if that just sounds like lip service to you, that God can use troubles in our life for our good, that just sounds like a line, it's because you've never really experienced God. If you're claiming to be a Christian because you grew up going to church or you grew up in the South, and you say, yeah, I believe in Jesus and all that stuff, but now here you are facing this river with a head full of doubt and a heart full of fear. Look back at what it is you say you believe Christ has done for you. Did He give His life to secure your future, or didn't He? I'll bet you can think of some times when He's shown up for you in your life. M maybe you just forgot. Or maybe your faith was never really built on Christ and what He's done in the first place, but built on you and what you've done. And if that's the case, I would say, now's the time to turn around and face your King. There's no judgment there, only forgiveness. Judgment is what you find when you run away from God, not what you find when you turn around and face Him. You'll find a smile and not a frown. Whether you're a Christian and finding out that this is where the rubber meets the road for you in, in your faith, or if you, you've never really bought into Christianity before, but you're certainly wrestling with difficult times, whoever you are and whatever the case is for you, now is the time. If you've never really experienced God before, now is your chance. You are this people. 
a head full of worry and a heart full of fear. And this is the God who is real. And he has acted in history on behalf of his people and his promises are sure. And you're supposed to remember that right now. That's where hope comes from. Hope for the future comes from what God has done in the past and the present reality that Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne of the universe right now and that He causes all things to work together for the good of those who love Him. Mark the occasion. When you do finally get on the other side of this and you're still standing, even if it takes a long time to recover, will you remember being delivered? Will you remember how God got you through? Will you remember how desperate you were for the presence of God, for your, for your comfort and for your encouragement? And will you still want it on the other side? Will you want His presence? Or will you begin to believe you don't need it once the money starts rolling in and the plans get back on track? Don't let that happen. I'm serious. It's easy. It's too easy. Forgetting is easy. One of the greatest enemies of faith is forgetfulness. Stop. Pause. Reflect. And remember. Take courage and have hope. Let's pray. Our gracious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is true. We thank you that you have acted in history and intervened on behalf of your people because it's times like this where we need reminders. We need something we can point back to, something we can look at and reference and remember that you are God and we are not. Help us, Lord, with surrendered hearts to place our lives and our hopes for the future in your hands and Lord, astonish us with your grace and your mercy and your loving kindness to us as you have previous generations for all of the history of man. God, we give you thanks for this day. We look forward to when we can gather in person again to sing your praise. Be glorified in your church this day. And may we find your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all have a great week. We'll be talking with you real soon. God bless. I'm so glad you joined us this morning for our virtual worship service. Listen, if someone took the time to send you this link to our virtual worship service, it's because they care about you. And we do too. So do me a favor. Go to our website, kingschurchsc.com. You'll find a virtual Sundays tab. Click that tab and on that page, you'll find a visitor's link. Let us know how we can get in contact with you. We can't wait to meet you.